Yeah, so um, a couple of quick observations. I think the first observation is, is that we're all sitting in Miami, which is actually the most productive, the strongest market in the entire country. What I want you to leave with is the rest of the country is not Miami. <laughs> okay. So spend your time reading things like the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times, The Economist. Get off of your iPhone and pay attention to what's going on outside of Miami because it, it's, it will give you the fake perspective on what's going on in the economy. Now, the, the stock market and the economy are not the same thing, and the markets you need to understand a little bit, little bit better. The debt markets, as Manny says, drives value. Our business, the value of commercial real estate, is highly correlated to interest rates. Interest rates, literally the cost of borrowing money went from 3% to 8%. So you're all in real estate, what happens when your cost of debt goes from three to eight? Your values go down, right? So focusing on the Federal Reserve, Jerome Powell and his, what he is going to do is going to result or lead us to a path of where interest rates are either going to go up or going to go down or stay flat. We've had a 20-year period of interest rates really coming down, which means asset values have continued to go up. And we've had a tremendous amount of debt liquidity, meaning that anyone on this panel was buying properties, multifamily, at four caps, three caps, five caps, industrial similarly, and hotels a bit wider. The debt markets were enabling bor uh, borrowers to buy these buildings because the cost of debt was three. So if your cap rate is four, you get a positive spread and you're making a seven, eight, nine, ten percent cash and cash return. Today, that borrowing cost is going to range somewhere between 5.5% and 9%, meaning that your cap rates have to have moved out as a result of it um, across the country. Now, in, in South Florida, there's a supply-demand imbalance, meaning that there's greater demand for commercial real estate than there is supply, and we have a lot of rental growth. So take that out of the equation. But as it relates to the rest of the markets, we really have to focus on the flows of capital. There's about $4.5 trillion of commercial real estate debt that is outstanding in the United States today. About $2.7 trillion is coming due over the next five years. Because of what's happened with the banking system and with high interest rates, the amount of availability, the availability of low-cost debt capital is at an imbalance relative to the demand. So we are in an imbalanced situation, which is going to result in less debt available and less cheap debt available for acquisitions. So what's happened is that the investment sales market has stalled out. It's at the lowest level it's been in sort of five odd years. I'm mentioning these things because I want you to think about these bigger concepts, the flows of debt capital, liquidity, the banking system. You talked about one of the regional banks. The regional banks make up about 70% of all financing in the United States. Bank financing comes from the regional banking system. And we've seen bank failures. So that is not a good thing for liquidity. The other thing I'll focus you on and, and you should read about are fundamentals. So what are the things that drive demand in commercial real estate? The health of the consumer. How healthy is the consumer? Read about it. Corporate earnings. Are corporations healthy or not? Read about it. And third is government stimulus programs. There's a bunch of about $7 trillion of stimulus. Read about it. I encourage you to read about it. So you have liquidity, the amount of debt available to support the acquisitions at a low level with increased regulation and banks having issues. And, se and secondly, you have fundamentals, which are the drivers of demand. So all I'm trying to do is to have you throw some things into your mind and force you to go read about banks, read about liquidity, and say, oh, that's what he meant. I see what's going on. And one final point is the Fed. So there's a 60 Minutes article uh, a couple of days ago with Jerome Powell. This is really boring stuff. But as you start peeling this back and trying to get context, just listen to that 60 Minutes um, interview. Very interesting because it covers debt. It covers the behavior of the US government as it relates to liquidity and where we think interest rates are going. And then fundamental to all of this is if interest rates come down, we will get stabilized values or increased in, increase in values, and that's what we're all hoping to do. So I would encourage you to log on to YouTube. It's on there, 60 minutes, very interesting Jerome Powell uh, interview. Uh, one, one other quick question. I, I read a report the other day that a lot of students coming out of universities that were looking at going into private equity are looking at going into private credit. Yeah. 
you want to say what? Sure. So private credit is, is the formation of capital, not in the banking sector, but in the non-bank sector. So Acor is one of the biggest non-bank lenders. So our capital comes from insurance companies, pension plans, endowments, sovereign wealth funds, uh, you know, private pools of capital that have been formed that are looking for a rate of return that is safe. So they used to invest in private equity, so folks that were buying companies and everything else, but because of the volatility in the markets and the movements in the economy, these are people that are pensioners, as an example. So the state teaches pension plan, and they just need like a rate of return. They don't want volatility. So they've moved a lot of their capital from more risky asset classes into private credit companies like ours that will then fuel the opportunity for folks like the developers over here to go and buy more properties. So that pool of capital has expanded dramatically, both on the corporate side as well as the commercial real estate side. So that is a huge opportunity for all of you in this room to look at for your careers. And I'll just make one more quick point though. I was recently uh, giving a, a guest lecture at a uni another university and to the class, I said, I think you're the luckiest class that I can remember in the last 10 years or 15 years. And everyone looked at me as if I was mad. The reason for that is the last 10 years have been, everything's been great. We're entering and we are in a phase where there's a lot of workouts. There's a lot of foreclosures. There's a lot of owners that are losing their properties to lenders. The most important thing for you coming out of your university is how much you learn in your first five or six or seven years, not how much money you make in those first years. So this opportunity that you've got in front of you is gonna be incredible.